देखिए हाय आई एम ग्लैड यू हियर हाउ आर यू फीलिंग गुड Over the past few weeks, we've talked about what makes a man more attractive to women in general, confidence and honesty. Today we'll get into the number one quality a woman looks for in a relationship, integrity. C.S. Lewis wrote, "Integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching." Integrity is another word for trustworthiness or consistency of character, and it's an attractive quality to people who want to do business or have any kind of relationship with us. Integrity seems to be one of those qualities that has many interpretations and conditions that apply to it, but it's really very simple. Integrity is when your beliefs words and actions are all in consistent alignment when you're consistent in character people know they can trust you there won't be any unpleasant surprises you are who you say you are and you come through on your promises there's nothing more important to building a relationship than trust when a woman knows she can trust you she feels safe enough to let her guard down and be herself with you and that's when things get sexy how do we demonstrate integrity number 1 make promises and keep them a promise is the first part of a decision a responsibility that we choose and then carry out number 2 be honest and clear in all your communications verbalize exactly what you mean and express the details of what you'll do Say no when you need to and don't overcommit to please others. Fuzzy communication leads to broken promises, so check that both parties clearly understand any contracts, whether verbal or written. Number 3. Keep the promises you make to yourself. Make the time every day to do what's necessary to stay healthy and achieve your goals. Number 4. make and keep appointments write lists set alarms and keep a calendar to stay on track and be on time number 5 surround yourself with admirable people we are known by the company we keep and where our energy goes our energy grows when we spend time with people of integrity and focus on positive motivational thoughts and ideas we improve our character and attract people who appreciate us for it like attracts like sometimes sickness injury or sudden family obligations force us to cancel plans and break a promise those events are unavoidable and frustrating for everybody if that happens give as much notice as possible explain the reason and apologize If you're a person who is normally very reliable, then an occasional lapse is easily forgiven when you clearly communicate and take responsibility for the disappointment. There's another reason that people break promises that we can avoid. When we talk about our plans and goals, we sometimes feel the same completeness as if we'd actually done it, and that can make us less likely to follow through. You might know somebody who frequently talks about losing weight and getting in shape, writing a novel or traveling to another country, but they don't do it. That's because just talking about it makes them feel as if they've accomplished their goal. To avoid that, it's important to express our intentions by emphasizing how valuable the goal is, so we're more likely to take action. Another way to prevent breaking a promise is to say no to tasks that make us feel resentful. The work doesn't get completed because we never wanted to promise it in the first place. For instance, don't promise a friend you'll help them move to a new house on a weekend when you told yourself you'd go fishing. It's better to say no so they can find alternatives 
rather than show up late or not at all because you resent giving up your weekend plans. Breaking a promise is the quickest way to deteriorate relationships, including the one with yourself. Brain research shows that breaking promises registers in our brain activity as emotional conflict. We're telling ourselves that we don't value our own word. Ultimately, it can harm our self-image, self-esteem, and our life. Trust is built through a series of experiences shared with others. When behavior is consistent, faith in the relationship develops. When we don't keep a promise to someone, it communicates to them that we don't value the relationship and have chosen to put something else ahead of our commitment. Even when we break small promises, others learn that they can't count on us. You know what? Never tell me you're going to call me and then don't call me. Not only does that hurt, but I'll never forget it because it's, it's just an easy thing to do, so there's no excuse. Broken agreements have a long-lasting impact and trust erodes when promises aren't kept. This is especially important in family relationships. As parents, my husband and I waited until the last minute to tell our kids we were going to Disneyland because breaking a promise like that would be devastating to a child. Be sure you're thinking clearly and calmly when you make a promise. How many of us have grounded our teenagers for a month in the heat of the moment and then realized we would have to enforce that for the next 30 days? Research evidence in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology indicates that some people make promises that later get broken because they focus on their partner's feelings in the moment of commitment. Their reason for making the promise is to soothe, pacify, or support. When their partner is feeling better and no longer distressed or in need of support, the reason for the promise is absent, so those people don't feel like they're breaking their word. The promise had a particular purpose in the moment of their partner's upset and is no longer necessary to follow through on. For example, Ted is always late when he and Patty are meeting friends or going to a movie. Patty becomes upset because being on time is important to her and Ted is always on time for work, so she believes he should be on time for social engagements too. Ted agrees and promises Patty that he will be on time from now on. But once again, Ted is late leaving the house for dinner out with friends. He had only promised to be on time to appease Patty. He makes no effort to change his patterns. Can you see why Patty continues to be upset? Ted and Patty need to have a calm, logical conversation about the problem, so Ted won't make hasty promises that he won't keep just to get Patty to calm down. We might believe that we need to say yes to get what we want or to ensure someone will like us. We tell people what we believe they want to hear, so they're happy. Be honest and remember, it's always better and less disappointing to undercommit and overdeliver than overpromise and fall short. There's nothing in life that says you must make promises to others. If you don't know if you can come through or not, simply set appropriate expectations. People respect honesty, even when faced with an answer that might not be exactly what they want to hear. Back to our example. Rather than Ted promising Patty he'll be on time for all future social activities, he needs to be honest about why he's late. He may resent having so many evenings out, or spending too much money, losing sleep, giving up a hobby, or not getting to read a novel or watch a documentary. If Patty understood his reasons, she could compromise by reducing the number of times Ted would need to accompany her. She could plan some ladies' nights and let Ted enjoy watching a documentary and getting to bed early. Or, if Ted just has trouble remembering what time they need to leave for the movies, Patty could put it on his calendar or set an alarm for him. How do we get to the point in our relationship where we trust each other enough to be honest about 
what we want, and who we really are. These techniques from the book The Man's Guide to Women by Drs. John and Julie Gottman show us how to attune to each other to create emotional connection that leads to trust. If you haven't already started, now would be a great time to take some notes. Write the word attune vertically down the side of the paper. This acronym will help us to remember all the important pieces to developing trust through conversation. A is for attend. Give each other your full attention. No cell phones, no television, computer, or distractions of any kind. TT is for turn toward. Physically turn your whole body to face your partner and look into her eyes. U is for understand. Ask about her feelings and what the problem or situation means to her. N is for non-defensively listen. That means don't interrupt, justify, or argue. Just let her talk and really hear what she says with her words, body language, and touch. E is for empathize. Let her know you value how she feels. Offer connection through gentle touch and give her the time and space to feel safe and heard. It might be difficult for you to give up fixing things or offering advice. We all want to make the world a better place for those we love by protecting, mending, or making right the things that are upsetting our partner or child. But remember that part of being a responsible person of integrity is finding and implementing our own solutions. Doing so will help us to develop self-esteem and confidence. So instead of taking over the conversation with logical, helpful advice, attune so your partner will feel safe and supported, and she may surprise you with an even better way to fix the problem. This week, I want you to check your level of integrity. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and relax. Think about the people in your life. What promises have you made to each other? What was the last promise that you made? Was it clearly communicated? And did you follow through? What are some promises that you've made to yourself? Are you working on those commitments or did you give up on them? What appointments do you have coming up this week? Do you need to make any new appointments with clients, doctor or dentist or an old friend? Are you always on time? Can you think of a time when you agreed to do something even though you wanted to say no? What happened? Open your eyes. How did it go? Do this integrity check every day this week. And when you have a conversation with somebody you care about, practice using the Attune method. Bring your notes until you have it memorized. No matter what, we can always improve. We can always press reset and build up our integrity. Do the exercises we talked about in the past videos to practice being honest with yourself about who you are and what you want. And then be honest with everybody else. Own your no. People will respect your decision and your integrity. By knowing what you want and what you believe, you will find it easier to have integrity and only make promises you're ready and willing to keep. When your words and actions are consistent and trustworthy, you set an example for the people in your life to do the same for you. You will have the life you're willing to accept. So don't settle for less than integrity in yourself and others. Please take a moment now and subscribe. I'll be uploading at least one video each week with occasional bonus videos. Post your comments below and let me know what you want to talk about in upcoming videos. Your questions and comments are important to me. Communication will keep this channel active and help us build a connected community. Thanks for meeting with me. We'll talk again soon.
Ciao. Let me freshen this up.